Okay, it's 10 o'clock. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. So uh, just want to say welcome to everyone. And I'm Lori Freitag from Revision Effects. We're here today with our team and also the team from Left Angle who have developed Autograph. We're excited to have the first of many live presentations. Just in case you can't stay for the whole presentation, we are recording and that will be available later. Today we're going to show you an overview of Autograph and Artisan, and then we'll follow that with a live Q&A to answer all of your questions. If you have questions during the presentation, just type them in the chat box and we'll get to those during the Q&A. At this time, I'm going to hand you over to Alexander Gauthier. He's one of the founders of Left Angle, and he's going to tell you more about their company, their team, their mission. And then Francois Grissard is going to give you a demo of their amazing new cutting edge application. Okay, Alexander. Thank you, Laurie. Uh, so here at Left Angle, we're a small team of people who've made big efforts listening to users from everywhere around the world and developing autographs from the ground up with a real user feedback. We want to make work easier and faster for professional teams and studios and build a community of motion designers and VFX artists who can work smarter with a trusted software application that they can count on every time. Our aim is to provide the best tools possible so that it's the work of the users that shine. Um, I look forward to answering your questions a little later after the demo that now Francois is going to make. Thank you very much, Laurie and Alex, for this introduction. And let's take a look at Autograph. Autograph has been made to work on 2D project and 3D project at the same time. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to drop a few images in my project panel here and uh, create the first composition based on the format of uh, this background image. I'm going to add a Revision FX logo and also a left angle logo. Obviously, you can rely on the layer stack because uh, Autograph is a layer-based compositing system, so you can rely on the stack to know exactly who is over who. But when you work on full screen like this, you can also switch to the visual stack here, uh, who allow to directly select layers and know exactly uh, the order of the layers. Um, here, I'm going to focus first on the Revision FX logo and um, in the autograph, you want to allow to create responsive design composition. So uh, instead of placing this logo at the top left corner of the composition, according to the format, I'm going to simply add something we call a generator. A generator is made to generate images or text or numerical value. And in this case, I'm going to add an encode composition generator and say, OK, I want to place this logo at left and top corner of the composition based on left and top corner of the image. And now if I change the composition format, because in Autograph, each composition is defined by a format, but you can at any time override the format of the composition. So now I can change simply uh, the aspect ratio and the definition of the composition to uh, change the position of this revision FX logo accordingly to the new format. So that's the way you can create responsive design composition in Autograph. Uh, you just have to render using the render manager this composition and say, OK, this time I want this format and this format and this format. And you can generate with only one composition numerous version with different aspect ratio. So now I'm going to focus on the left angle logo and just reduce a bit its scale. And actually, I'm going to uh, switch the scale to zero. And now I'm going to animate the scale not using regular keyframe. We have regular keyframe, of course, but I'm going to use something we call a modifier. Modifiers in Autograph are here to change value or to make value evaluate. For instance, by using the uh, animator here, I can say, OK, I want to go to zero 
0.206, for instance, in one second using a elastic interpolation. And if I play my my video now, my animation, I can see that that my left angle logo is automatically animated in one second using this interpolation. And I can switch, for instance, to bounce interpolation like this. And uh, as you can see, the logo is now bouncing on the screen. So I'm not going to go further for the 2D part because here I want to focus on the 3D part. And for this, I'm going to import a USD file. USD stands for Universal Scene Description. It's a file format created by Pixar. And it's obviously made to interchange 3D element and 3D object and 3D scene in a more general way between software. But not only, it's also made to compose 3D scene by adding and merging assets in the same scene. So here, as you can see, I have a character, an animated character. It's exported from Blender in this case. Uh, and as you can see, it's driven by an amateur uh, or we also call this a skin character because he have a skeleton who drive his, uh, its animation. And to edit this scene, I'm going to create a void scene here and linked to this asset. The term link is really important here because in autograph we link to assets and we can also link to project. So if this original asset is changed, is modified by another software, the project will be automatically uh, updated in autograph. The autograph project will be automatically updated. So in this case, I'm going to focus on the scene and now I have access to any element of this 3D assets, such as the light, for instance, so I can turn off the light and I can also make the plane disappear and maybe, uh, remove the camera and also remove the armature here. Okay. So now my character is completely in the dark. And I can integrate this character in another scene, but I can also integrate this character in the composition. I'm going to use this scene, I'm going to name it character, and going to drop this uh, element in the scene. And now, as you can see, everything is black, no light in the scene for now, but my character is here and I can switch to 3D mode here to see my character. So when I switch the viewer to 3D mode, I switch the composition to 3D mode too. And uh, I can simply add another 3D asset now in the scene by importing, for instance, this spaceship corridor and add this corridor on the same stack. So now the two 3D elements are merged into the same scene. And as you can see, the spaceship corridors and light in it. So my character is also light at the same time. So I can frame my character by placing my camera like so and create a camera from this point of view. And now you can see the camera is visible in the stack. So now I'm going to simply select my character and duplicate this character to create a clone and place it further away in the corridor, maybe by locking my camera, changing the frame a bit. And I can also time offset this character, as you can see, to change the animation between the two characters and ex extend the range of this character and this one too, maybe. And as you can see now, no, def no animation has been defined for this part. So I can select the original asset here and say I want to set the before this range and after this range in bounce mode. So now I'm able to play this animation back and forth in bounce mode. So now my character will move to the infinity. For the 3D rendering, we use a render engine named Filament and Filament provide a lot of uh, post process such as for instance here the uh, depth of field and I'm gonna simply remove the overlay here and by going to my um, camera parameters I can simply focus on the first character here okay I'm gonna animate this camera by going to uh, the beginning of the animation and create a first keyframe on the position and move the camera to the second character. I can also create a keyframe to keep focusing on this character than the second one. Okay. But the most important here is to understand that this 
3D render is now converted to a 2D render when I switch back to the 2D mode of the viewer. And now I can use another image, for instance this one, and switch this image to a 3D plane and place it in the composition, in the scene now, not the composition, but the scene. Okay, push it outside, maybe the corridor, turn it by 90 degrees and scale it up. Okay, to have something to see through the window. So now, because this composition is rendered on the fly, I can create a new composition, put the previous one in it, and add 2D elements, such as, for instance, the dust texture here. I'm going to switch it to uh, screen mode and reduce its opacity a bit. So now you are going back to 2D. But you can also do the opposite by uh, getting back to the 3D composition here and import a new 3D element. I'm going to import the screen on wall USD here and um, oh no sorry it's not this one screen on wall yes yeah, this one sorry and um, as you can see you have a 3D screen and you have no light in it so I'm going to create a new scene and link this element here and simply go to the screen and override the screen here and create a new material, assign this material to the screen and now I can use a 2D composition as a texture for this 3D model. So I'm going to get back to this composition, remember the 2D composition I made uh, at the beginning and uh, I can now get back to this scene and say I want to use this composition as a base color and now as you can see the animation is now playing as a texture for this 3D object. So I can get back to the composition here, 3D composition containing all 3D assets, and take this scene and put it here in the corridor. So now everything is merged in uh, the same scene and I can go back to 2D and add different kind of stuff like this. So that's how we can mix things together in Autograph from switching to 2D, from 3D to 2D and go back and forth in the same software. So now let's talk a bit about uh, Artisan. Artisan is the left angle web services integrating a video player, as you can see here. Uh, we manage your C image sequence and you can review and iterate and also comment this video by adding markers on it. So here I add markers, I draw a shape to say, okay, I want to do this part brighter, I want to have this part brighter. So I click on the marker and I start the conversation to say brighter, please. And now I simply click to send and I can start a conversation to know exactly what to do and uh, iterate with the team to uh, during the project. We also integrate a uh, audio player who automatically generate waveform and uh, we can also obviously place markers and annotation on this audio file. But the most important is that you can synchronize autograph project with Artisan. So in this case, I'm going to file and sync in Artisan and I'm going to define a share folder and push my project into an Artisan drive. And now I can synchronize element here. Uh, so you can see the list of elements used in this project and I click on apply change. And uh, now all the file has been sent to Artisan. So if I go back to the uh, web interface of Artisan, I can see that now all my um, elements are synchronized. My files are synchronized. And if I get back to Autograph and I simply make a minor change and save the project, if I now refresh the list, I can see that I have to update my project. So I apply the change and now I get back here to Artisan and everything has been updated. Um, I can also have a thumbnail of my project here. So that's a way you can iterate and collaborate with your team using Artisans right inside Autograph. Thank you, Francois, for that amazing demo of Autograph. Now let's see how you can try it for yourself. 
Revision Effects is the exclusive worldwide distributor of Autograph, in case you were wondering where we come in. You can download the trial version here. Just scroll on down and you can choose whichever version you need and just download and install. To purchase, you just go back to that original link on our website and you can see the pricing and the current special launch promotion that you can take advantage of until March 1st. As far as the tutorials go, you can just launch Autograph and you see this Assets section, which contains a number of projects to choose from to familiarize yourself with some of the capabilities. These demo tutorial projects will be updated regularly, and the files and assets are downloaded to your demo projects folder on your system. They're accompanied by a tutorial that you can find on the Left Angle website under Resources Assets. In addition, the documentation is readily available and really easy to navigate. There's also a 50-minute Getting Started tutorial on the Left Angle YouTube channel and the Revision Effects YouTube channel as well. We also have tutorials on our channel to learn how to use our plugins in Autograph. Okay, that should cover it. Now we can open up to the Q&A. Okay, thank you, Francois, Alexander, and now we're going to open to Alexander or Pierre will be answering your questions. Yeah, so this is the first one. Uh, could you please explain the advantage of autograph layer based structure comparison to AE layers and nukes nodes? Um, so, autograph was like uh, thought out to be kind of an in between After Effects and Nuke. So, uh, what we really want people to do compositing in autograph. And we really feel that uh, Autograph has the capabilities to uh, perform really high-end compositing um, features. Um, we offer a 32-bit uh, color pipeline. Um, everything is GPU-based and very fast to process. Um, we do a lot of uh, uh, filtering preservation to keep a very high-quality uh, imaging pipeline. And overall, we believe that the layer-based structure of the UI uh, enables users to um, better interact with their workflow. And especially when timing is involved, uh, everything is so much faster to work with. So in this way, Autograph was more designed towards uh, uh, motion graphics artists. Uh, but we don't worry. We, we this question comes uh, comes around often. So. In the future, we plan to have a, a node-based editor that will be kind of a reflection of the layer. Uh, instead of having like a completely separate nodal environment, you'll have a, a kind of a reflection where uh, your nodes are actually the same as the generators and modifiers you use in Autograph, so that whenever you use one, the other one is also dated. And we believe in this way, it gives you uh, the benefit of the nodes, which is uh, at the quick glance, you have an overview of your project. Uh, otherwise, um, we'll also have nodes for the further material uh, editing system we will be integrating. I hope this answers your question. <laughs> um, can you export USDZ? Uh, currently, we import USDZ. Uh, we do not export USD because Autograph is kind of thought as like the receiving end of uh, your animation and modeling pipeline. So that's where you do the compositing. <clears throat> we could theoretically export USDZ, but the main difficulty is that uh, we do a lot of animations. And as you can see, you can you have a lot of like uh, interpolation modes that USD doesn't natively uh, expose. So the only way for us to export USD would be to bake everything, keyframes, and so on. So the usability of such feature remains to be seen. Uh, if, of course, some people have like some insight of what it could be useful for, uh, it, this uh, a topic to explore. But I don't think this is really useful for us to currently export USD. Uh, 
As for the other 3D model, uh, 3D file format import, uh, we plan in the future to import GLTF and uh, FB, uh, FBX um, as converters to, to, towards USD. Note that Autograph doesn't import USD. It's like linked to the USD, meaning whenever you change something in your USD scene, it gets reflected in your project. So you can really like have a collaboration with your 3D department that's doing the USD and the compositing department that's using the USD and not actually importing and copy, copying everything. Uh, how about substantiator files? Uh, sorry, we do not support substantiator files. In the future, we plan to go towards Material X developed by ILM. Uh, it's the new standards for material design. Uh, every major uh, studio currently is going onto this new material format. Uh, AMD has the Radian Pro Render uh, Path Tracer that supports Material X. Uh, Hydra Storm uh, Renderer that we support in Autograph also supports Material X. So we believe this is like the the good the next choice for uh, material design. Um, then there's other topics. So will this artisan in the future integrate Frame.io? <laughs> uh, no, uh, sorry. Artisan is kind of like Frame.io's uh, competitor. So we made artisan in uh, so that we could better integrate uh, collaboration and reviewing features right within Autograph. Uh, in the future, we'll be developing Artisan so that uh, you can even better uh, collaborate right within your timeline. So, no. Is Artisan cloud only? Currently, yes. But we can, uh, on demand, uh, have a local distribution for specific uh, on specific servers. Uh, it's all container-based. Uh, but please contact us for additional information. Is there a Discord or Slack community? Uh, currently, we don't have a Discord or a Slack community. Uh, we are going to open next week uh, public forums onto which you can ask questions uh, or answer up to people questions. Uh, how, how is it to work with? To pre-render parts of the composition. Yeah, currently uh, it's quite easy to uh, cache a composition. We call it caching, pre-rendering. Uh, you actually, when in, on your composition, there's an enable caching parameter. You just check it, and then it's asking you if you want to uh, cache eight bit or thirty two bit. And basically, it's caching it autographs main cache. Uh, in the future, we'll have a embedded proxy system where the it doesn't cache, but it actually renders X or uh, sequences of your composition so that you can reuse them right with an autograph. Um, how is it? How is it to work with mid-level monitors and customize the interface? Uh, currently, you can split the panels of autograph and drag them on other monitors. Uh, we don't have yet the full full screen viewer interface, but it's going to come really shortly. So, hope it's not a blocker for you. What about Redshift support? Possibly, yes. Uh, so we've been speaking with Maxon so that uh, we can integrate their uh, render delegate uh, through Hydra uh, so that Redshift can be used as a main path presser in Autograph. Uh, also, we've contacted them so that we can get like main uh, mainstream support for USD export uh, from them currently. We mostly recommend people to use Blender, NVIDIA, Omniverse branch, which is the, the most complete USD exporter. Photograph, does it support multiple GPUs? Currently, it doesn't because uh, uh, the drawing APIs we use don't uh, support multiple GPUs. Uh, it would make sense if we start supporting uh, path tracers so that, such as Redshift. Uh, if you need to change an USD, would you recommend to make a new one and maybe use the docs like you did with the team logos to switch between them? 
not sure I understand, but if you need to change an USD, the way is you change it in your 3D package or within Autograph, where you can override transforms, uh, visibility materials, lights, and then you use it in another composition or another scene in Autograph. That's the application run of virtual machine. Uh, in theory, it can, but uh, licensing is turned off by default. So please contact us if you have specific needs. Uh, we like we we would like to hear from you. <laughs> is the render only function GPU or CPU? Um, currently, it's only GPU. We also use the CPU. Uh, we don't have yet a CPU only rendering. Uh, we are working on that. We actually have it, but it's not yet finished uh, for like cloud-based rendering. But no, currently we require a GPU. For Artisan, what cloud service does it run on uh, AWS? Uh, currently it's uh, running on uh, OVH uh, cloud provider and it's based in North America and Europe. Thank you, Alexandre. I think we cover a lot of uh, introduction material. I think we're good for this meeting. Uh, thank you for showing up and you'll hear more about us. And if you guys have any more questions, you can contact us, of course, uh, on our website and uh, contact emails. Everybody can try and download the software, of course, and we'd be happy to hear from you. Yeah, we just changed uh, the demo trial now last three months. So thank you all for joining our live presentation, and we'll be having uh, more in the future.